Hello, my name is Max Forsberg and I'm a level designer attending at the Game Assembly. This is Aqueduct, a level I created for Counter-Strike Global Offensive using the Hammer Editor with the intention of promoting competitive gameplay. Counter-Strike Global Offensive is a fast-paced first-person shooter that has multiple game modes. I chose the competitive game mode Bomb Defusal. This competitive mode has five players face five players. One team defends the bomb sites on the level, and the other team tries to plant the bomb at one of them to win the game. However, they only win the game after they have successfully detonated the bomb. To start my, off my project, I researched already popular maps that are in the game, for an example DDoS2. I read the blog posts made by the creator of DDoS2, focusing on figuring out why the map is so successful. I found that he, among many things, had used a special type of a layout method known as the clover design, and I used it to create my own layout. My goal was to make a level that could potentially get accepted into the game through Steam's workshop system where the community votes by playing the level. To achieve this, I knew I would have to make a level that stood out from the already made levels, including the look of the level and how the level played. I did this by making sure that I chose a special beam. There's no other map in the game with a massive aqueduct that towers over the player. And the layout is based on the same philosophy as DDoS2, which has the bad side that it is very similar. Uh, however, the good side is that players do not feel alienated. They kind of feel at home. They kind of know how the flow is of the level, but they don't know about where the cover and how the sizes of the different areas are in comparison to the DDoS2 layout. The layout process consists of creating nine squares in a number pad layout that you then connect to the neighboring squares. Due to the symmetry of the layout, the balancing part of the level is simpler to control throughout the development process because players can, can, all, can only control five squares with a full team. After I finished my block out, I started playtesting with bots. This showed me that the flow in my level was way too fast. I had to make sure the two teams did not face each other too quickly, which made me change some things about the middle of the map, which is where the earliest confrontation possible can happen. I did this by, for an example, removing the doors that would connect the middle portion for the terrorists in the level. Instead, I changed it to be a window, which gives the terrorists a view into the middle area and they can possibly control it from this angle. However, it leaves them very exposed in the way that experienced players of the map will know that terrorists will likely stay in this spot so they can preemptively aim at this location and shoot them. The middle of the map was constantly changed throughout the entire development process. Since it is such an important part of the map, connecting every single square in the level, I found that a good number of entrances to the middle area was either three or four since this enables one player to keep their eye on two, but someone can ambush them from the third or perhaps throw in a flashbang and stun the player and then take over the middle area. At first, my design was cluttered with props because I thought I was able to sell a more believable world if I had more stuff in my level. But what was actually happening was that players on lower end PCs were lagging a lot more than perhaps me who sit, uh, sits at a very high-end PC and it was also making it harder for players to spot other players in the environment which made me go more towards a minimalistic approach when it got to detailing my level. Just enough to sell the world but not too much to obscure vision. Something else that was an issue during the development process was that I did not keep a consistent theme throughout my level. No one was really able to pinpoint the exact location on a map or the general area. They just felt like it was a combination of an Italian city with Arabic landscaping. And to fix this, I had to rework roughly 50% of my level into something that I felt was comfortable. It is much more important to keep a consistent theme throughout your level because this will make sure that players feel a lot more immersed in your level. Choosing an aqueduct as my main piece gave me a lot of creative freedom, since aqueducts can be found in most of the former Roman Empire area, which includes France, Spain, Italy, Turkey, um, Egypt. I mean, the, the, the 
the wide horizon of what I could choose to make was really big, but I decided to go with an Arabic Italian theme since Valve has already made assets that work very well with this theme and uh, I am not a graphics artist. The aqueduct was added to the level after a playtester commented on some simplistic BSP work that was hanging over him as he entered the middle area of the level. He said, this kind of feels like an aqueduct. I don't know, it just feels like an aqueduct. And after he said that, I knew I had to make the real aqueduct that you can see in the level today. In retrospect, when it gets to the level itself, I would like to change a lot. In fact, after a month of this, I have actually would like to rebuild the entire level because there is a lot of design flaws that I feel my level has. Uh, for example, I could have spent my time more wisely and not been propping the level so much because if I would have instead focused on the scale of the level, I could have made a larger level within the same time span and it would have been even better. I would also want the aqueduct to stand out more and one of the suggestions I got from the community was that I could move it to have it be included in the bomb sites so the terrorists are there to uh, destroy the supports of the aqueduct which could have a really cool finale to the level um, since a lot of water could be gushing down from the aqueduct down onto the playable space and that would have been a much cooler finish than what there is for now. I would also like to try to keep a much more consistent theme throughout my design and I would like to have done more research in an area and I uh, would have also have play tested my level a lot more and perhaps even participated in a tournament with it because it's a different thing viewing it from a distance in a spectator mode than it is to play the level and I was very limited in my personal playtest sessions because I only had uh, bots or friends on Steam that could uh, help me out there. Thank you for watching my video. My name is Max Forsberg and I'm happy you viewed it all the way to the end. If you wish to contact me, you can contact me at contact at maxforsberg.se or you can write in the comments field here on YouTube.